that sense. Let's now take a look at some formulas for calculating mean and, and so on. Okay, so the, we can calculate either the mean of the population or the mean of the sample. The mechanics are exactly the same. So to calculate the mean of the population, incidentally, the mean of the population is represented by the Greek symbol mu. It, you simply add up all the values, sigma i equals 1 to n xi, and you know that that means sigma is the sum, is the addition operation, right? So you just sum up all the values. So xi, when i varies from 1 to n, will be x1, x2, x3, x4, up to xn. So that gives you, the, the numerator gives you the total of all the values, and the denominator gives you uh, is basically n, which is the total number of values. Okay. In statistics, it's common to use the le capital letter N to represent the number, uh, the size of the population, and the letter small letter N to represent the size of the sample. Okay. So sample mean is calculated in exactly the same way. Sigma equals 1 to small n xi divided by small n. And notice that we represent uh, the sample mean by x bar, not mu. Right? This is the statistic. And this is the parameter. Mu is the parameter. Okay. In R, you can calculate it by using the mean function, right? So you say mean, and you supply all the values for which you want to calculate the mean. And you can say mean age data dollar age, which is all the values of age in that data frame age data. You can also get at it by age data within square brackets comma seven, right? Seven being the seventh attribute that happens to be age, and we leave the first parameter uh, per first item blank with before the comma we leave it blank and that is because we want all the rows only the seventh column or alternately we can do the same thing but we can address the uh, age attribute by its name okay instead of dollar we use the comma operation here uh, so therefore we put the age within double quotes okay so you can do all of these and calculate the mean of the age of course if you want some other attribute you can do the same thing Let's look at variance now. Okay, how do you calculate the variance? As I've already described, the variance is the average squared deviations average, average of the squared deviations from the mean. So for example, here we take, let's say there are uh, n values, capital N values. Here we are doing, doing the population. So sigma i equals one to n xi minus mu, the whole square. Mu recall from the previous slide is the mean, is the population mean, it's the parameter. So for every value, from i from 1 to n, capital N, we take the deviation from the mean, xi minus mu, and then we square it and add up all those squares and then take the average. Okay, And notice that the symbol for variance is sigma squared, the Greek symbol sigma and squared. That is the symbol for variance. And of course, we know that it's a population parameter because we are talking about the population. Okay, Now, unlike mean, the computation of sample variance is slightly different. Okay, when you have a sample, you divide not by n but by n minus one. That's the only difference. Okay, because we are using the sample variance as an estimate of the population variance. Okay, so when we say sample variance, it's sort of slightly misleading. It's not simply the variance of the numbers in the sample, but you've got a sample and you're using it to estimate the variance of the population. Okay, and uh, therefore you divide by n minus one. We won't get into the, the rationale of why we divide by n minus 1 as opposed to n. Okay, that's the subject matter of statistics. You definitely already studied that. Okay, and notice that the symbol for the sample variance is s squared as opposed to sigma squared. Okay, so once again, uh, this is a statistic, not a, par not a parameter because it's dealing with the, sam with the sample and not with the population. It's an estimate of the population variance. Now, why do we need an estimate of the population variance? As we discussed earlier, very often you cannot hope to operate on the population. Most of the time you're working on samples and therefore you're using the sample statistics to estimate population parameters. Okay, so that's what this is. But of course, in this course, we're not going to be overly concerned about the distinction between sample and population and so on. Okay, maybe after this uh, lecture, we won't talk about it at all. Having looked at variance, let's look at what are the units of variance. Okay, so to find the units of variance, we can see, just look at the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator, we've got xi 
which will have the units of, let's say we are talking about the sales of a bunch of companies, then each XI value represents the sales of a particular company. So that will be in currency units, for example, dollar. Mu is the average sales of a company. Also, that is also in currency units or dollars. And therefore, XI minus mu will be a currency unit, like a euro or a dollar or whatever currency you're considering. Square that, and you've got dollar square or euro square or some such currency squared values divided by n, which is a dimensionless value. n has no units, it's just numbers, right? And therefore, the overall units for sigma square is dollar squared or meter squared or pound squared, or whatever it is that you're measuring squared, which by itself doesn't make too much sense, right? You, we really cannot ascribe a meaning to the, that particular unit, right? So we'd like to have something that represents the, the spread in terms of units that we can actually wrap our heads around. Okay, so if you take the square root of the variance, as this formula on the screen shows, and that is represented by the Greek symbol sigma, right? If you take the square root, then the square root will have units like meters or dollars or euros or pounds or whatever the uh, units in which the original variable, uh, very original value is measured. And that's a good thing, right? So suppose you have the sales of 100 companies given to you, let's say in dollars, and we find out that the standard deviation, the square root of the variance, now has uh, a value of 100, right? Or, or uh, let's say the, the value is uh, 100,000 dollars. Right. So now what that means is that on the average, a value of sales of a company deviates by $100,000 uh, 100, from the mean. Okay. Now that's something meaningful. That gives you some sense of what is the variability. Let's say you have one set of data where the uh, standard deviation is 100000 Another set of data, let's say companies from a different industry, and the standard deviation is 150000 Right now, you have an idea that the second data set has got some more variability than the first data set, at least computed in terms of standard deviation. Right, so that is why standard deviation is a useful measure because the units of measurement are something that we can relate to. Let us take this a little bit further. Suppose you have standard deviations of heights of a set of students, let's say that set is called A and their standard deviation happens to be 3.35 inches or 3.35 centimeters, whatever the units you're measuring height in. And you've got another set B, and there uh, the standard deviation of those heights is 4.82. Okay, now the question arises, which set A or B has the higher variability? Now prima facie, obviously, it looks like the set B has higher variability, but of course, we have to be careful what we are measuring, right? In the sense that, of course, here we are talking about heights, but the standard deviation or variance has to be seen in the context of the magnitude of the values you're measuring. Let's say the set A consists of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, heights of kids who are five-year-olds, okay? And then you get a standard deviation of 3.35. Let us say the set B consists of the heights of people who are much taller, much older, let's say uh, 25 year olds. Okay. Now for 25 year olds, you would expect that the heights would have much more variability. So given the context that we are talking about much older people, the, deviate, the standard deviation of 4.82 might actually be quite low. And the standard deviation of 3.35 for five year olds may actually be quite high. Okay, so we cannot look at standard deviation just in isolation sometimes, right? And we need to look at it in the context of the mean of the corresponding values. Okay, let's say that the mean of the set A is 40 and the mean of the set B is 60. Okay, so with respect to a mean of 40, you have a standard deviation of 3.35 and with respect to a mean of 60, you have a standard deviation of 4.82. Right? So the mean of set B is higher, and therefore you might expect that its standard deviation would also be higher, but relative to the mean, what is the standard deviation doing? Okay? So sometimes when you're comparing populations or when you're comparing value, sets of values whose means are quite different, in those cases, the standard deviation alone 
might not give you a good picture of what is more variable, right? So therefore, statisticians use this thing called coefficient of variation or CV, which is really standard deviation divided by the mean or sigma by mu, okay? So sigma by mu in our earlier example is uh, actually lower for set B than for set A. Now, what is the un what are the units of coefficient of variation? We already saw that sigma has the units of the original measure, right? So if you're measuring sales, sigma will be uh, currency like dollars or euros or British pounds or, or whatever, right? And mu, of course, is the mean of those values. It has exactly the same units, right? So coefficient of variation actually has no units, right? It's dollars divided by dollars. It has no units at all or, you know, whatever it is, inches divided by inches or centimeters divided by centimeters or meters divided by meters. So coefficient of variation is a unitless or dimensionless quantity. And that's actually a great thing because you can then compare it across all kinds of things. You know, you may compare a set of heights to a set of weights, right? Because coefficient of variation has no units. So you may say, well, these set of heights are much more variable than the set of weights or something like that, right? So actually speaking, coefficient of variation Act, makes it possible for us to really compare apples and oranges. That's a great thing, okay? So